upon the person of Jesus Christ, my Savior, and the one who is both Lord and God. There is no other God besides Jesus Christ. You can read here about him, and uh, who knows, maybe, perhaps, God will give you light, give you illumination, understanding, enable you to comprehend God's Word, see the Savior, um, and see your need of the Savior, and maybe perhaps even give you the precious gift of faith. More precious, I tell you, or rather God's Word does, more precious than silver or gold. Faith, that is, in God's Son, Jesus Christ. If you'd like to have a copy of God's Word, please do feel free to come and ask for one. Prophet Daniel says in the Old Testament, it's a good testimony, it's a good confession. He says here, he says, we have sinned and have committed iniquity and have done wickedly and have rebelled even by departing from thy precepts and from thy judgment. That testimony, that confession could be yours, could be mine, could be Scotland's, could be every man, woman, and child born into this world. Departure from God, departure from his law, from his precepts, is in fact departure from God. That's the indictment that God has against you. Every man woman and child born into this world. God has an indictment against you. You have departed from God. You have apostatized. You were conceived in sin. That's where your sin career began. It goes all the way back to the first man, Adam. He wasn't just the first man. He was, the he was the head of the entire human race. And when he sinned and brought death upon himself, he brought it upon the entirety of the human race. So that now by natural generation, one after another, God can say that we are all of us conceived in sin in our mother's womb, there conceived in sin, nine months later, born in sin with a, a sinful nature, shaping an iniquity, ready to perform lawlessness. And out of those natures, you have, every man, woman, and child, under the sound of my voice here, this afternoon in the town of Stirling, you have all of you sinned, committed iniquity, done wickedly, rebelled, and departed from the living and true God. That's God's indictment against you. Not mine, 
not my opinion. No, the opinion, the word of God, the testimony of God against all of mankind and against you. But of course the good news, the glad tidings that we are here to bring to you this afternoon in Sterling is that God has provided a way, a way by which, a way by which Adam, your first parent, a way by which he could be saved, a way by which his posterity, a way by which you could be saved. God provided a safety net for Adam to fall into and for you to fall into. It's called the gospel. The word means good news. What is the content of the good news? Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners, those who have sinned and done iniquity, wickedness, and have rebelled against God. You see, it's out of those sinful natures in which you were conceived and born that comes all the wickedness and all the rebellion, all the sins. That's where it comes from. And God's testimony further is that you are all of you incontinent. You know what it's like to be incontinent? Something that's in you, you know, but you can't keep it from coming out. It must come out of you. Well, that's your state and sin, says God. You are incontinent. You've got sin in you, a sinful disease in you, and you can't keep it in. It comes out of you. It comes out of you in your thoughts. It comes out of you in your words. It comes out of you in your actions. You do wickedly. You do wickedly. You do iniquity. You do rebellion against God. You have sinned. You have come short of the glorious standard, the mark for which God has sent for you. You've come short. You've failed. You fail not just to hit the bull's eye. You fail to reach even the target, says God. You've not even tried to reach the target. No, you've come way, way short of the mark. You sin and come short of the mark because of that sinful nature that you have within you, you see. Departing from God departing from his precepts, departing from his holy law. You've transgressed, you've broken God's commandments. you sinned against God. Oh, you may have hurt yourself. You may have hurt your neighbor. You may have hurt your family. You may have hurt your children. You may have hurt your wife, your husband. You may have hurt all manner of people. But my friends, it is against God and God only that you have done this evil, this wickedness. And it's before God that you'll be judged. Not your neighbor, not those whom you've offended, not those whom you have hurt or damaged. Oh, you perhaps, maybe, you need their forgiveness, doubtless you do. But my friends, it's God's forgiveness that you need because it's sin, you have sinned against God. You have sinned against your best good. You have sinned against your maker. You have sinned against the, the one who is the overflowing fountain, I tell you, of all good. There is no good apart from God. There's no life apart from God. All you've got is death, sir. You're the walking dead. You're dead men walking, that's what you are. Yeah? You're just waiting, the gallows, the gallows have already been erected and the execution awaits you. But already, already dead. Dead in your trespasses and sin. Dead to God, spiritually dead. No life in you, my friend. Because you have sinned against God against a holy, righteous, and sin-hating God. 
who will hold you account. You see, you're a, a, a morally accountable creature. But you know that. You know that. You don't need me to tell you. You don't need me to tell you that there's a God. You have the knowledge of God in you. There's no such a thing as an atheist on planet Earth. You call yourself what you want. Call yourself Santa Claus if you want. Doesn't change anything. You have an innate knowledge of God in you. God has stamped the knowledge of himself innately in your being. You know that God is, but you've departed from him. You've rejected him. So now what do you do? You suppress, you hold down that truth of the knowledge of God in wickedness. That's what you do. You take that knowledge of God and you try to snuff it out. You know? It's like daddy. You know, when daddy goes to the beach with the children, out comes the beach ball. Daddy takes the ball into the sea. He sits on it, pushes it down into the water, and he cries out to the children, where's the ball? Where's the ball? But the children know daddy. They know he's playing the fool. They know where the ball is. Daddy is suppressing it. He's holding it down under the water. They know where the ball is. And so does Daddy. But you see, my friends, that's what you do with the knowledge of God. You know that God is. But you sit on that knowledge. You push it down. And Daddy, Daddy has to work hard to keep the ball under the water because it keeps wanting to come up again. And that knowledge of God in you keeps wanting to come up again. And you have to fight and struggle. You have to work hard to suppress the truth of the knowledge of God. And you do it in wickedness. You do it in wickedness. You sin against God in doing it. My friend, it is against God you have sinned and done wickedly and done iniquity, and done lawlessly, living lawlessly, denying God, enjoying all the benefits of his creation, and the good things, even the good things that he gives you, even the prosperity that you middle class people here in Stirling Town today, with your coffee culture, yeah, all the good things that God affords you, what do you use them for? You use them in the service of sin against the holy God who one day will bring you to account for these things, who will judge you for these things. Against God you sin. Against an eternal God you sin. So therefore the punishment must be eternal too. The Bible says concerning those already in hell, of which there are millions and millions, it says that the smoke of their torment ascended up forever and ever and ever. That's the end of your sin, not the grave. Not the grave, that's part of it. The wages of, the wages of sin is death. The grave awaits you. The sixth field of earth, the crematorium, whichever your choice be, it awaits you. It's appointed unto man once to die. But then after that, then comes the judgment. The next, you breathe your last, my friends, and the next person that you see is the judge of all the earth. The dreadful, horrible, angry, furious judge against whom you have sinned living your life in denial of him, doing sin, doing iniquity, doing wickedness, and living in rebellion against your maker, then you stand before God. And Jesus, he says, you give account for every idle word, every idle word that you've spoken. Never mind the bad one, never mind the cursing, never mind the swearing, Never mind the lies, never mind the blasphemous words. Every idle word, <coughs> every idle word, says Jesus, 
you give account for in that day. You'll even give account for this time in your town in Stirling when you were perhaps just passing by, but the gospel, the good news of God's salvation, the declaration of what God requires of you, repentance of your sin, faith towards his son Jesus Christ was declared amongst you, you'll give account for that too. That is, if you continue to reject the gospel, that is, if you continue to live in denial of God, in denial of your maker, in denial of your sin, living like the foolish old ostrich with its head buried in the sand, thinking that nobody but nobody can see it. How foolish to live your life in sin and iniquity with the delusion that God does not see you. He sees everything. He sees what you do in the dark. He sees what you do in the light. He sees everything. Where can you go? The psalmist asks the question to hide from God. You go up, he's there. You go down, he's there. To the left, to the right, there's nowhere in all creation that you can go to escape the gaze of God. He sees it all. And he sees all your sin. He sees the very thoughts and intentions of your heart right this very moment against God. You've departed from God, Sterling. You've departed from your maker. You've departed from the one, the one, my friends, who would do you good. The one, my friends, who would do you no harm. Says of my Savior Jesus that he only ever went about doing good. Never hurt, never harmed anyone. And you know what the world, you know what you did to him? You crucified him, you nailed him to a cross. No, no, you see, I wasn't there. I'm not 2,000 years old. Oh, you were there. I was there. We were all there. And we together, all of us, we drove the nails into his hands and feet with our sin. You crucified the Lord of glory. But of course, if you had known who he was, you would not have done that. But you see, my friends, the good news is that there is a way back from that pathway of sin. And Jesus says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man, no man comes to the Father. No one gets right with God, that is. No one gets restored to God. No one gets forgiven by God except, by, except through me. You have, you must needs come to Jesus Christ. You must needs repent of your sin. You must need, my friends, come confessing your sin to Jesus Christ, the Son of God, the only one who can justify you, make you right with God. Take your sin away. That's why he's called in the Bible the Lamb of God, which taken away the sin of the world and would take your sin away today. All your guilt, all your shame. I tell you everything that you ever did. What's your sin? What's your darling lust? I don't know and I don't even want to know. That's a rhetorical question. But I tell you, whatever you are, However many your sins are, however filthy and dirty and shameful they might be, I tell you, I tell you there's a way back. There's a way by which you can be restored. There's a way by which the slate can be wiped clean. There's a way by which you can be restored to the favor and the blessing of God. It's called the grace of God. And it's afforded to, it's given to those who in repentance and faith turn to the Son of God, turn to Jesus Christ, children. That's the lesson for today. That's why you're here today, not to see Sterling. You're here to hear about Jesus Christ. Repent of your sins, your wickedness, and turn to Jesus Christ that you might be saved. That's today's lesson. 
take it home with you, do some homework. So you see, my friends, sinned against God and against God only have you sinned. And says the prophet, says the prophet, neither have we hearkened unto thy servants, the prophets, the preachers, stone deaf to the word of God, my friend. God sends his servants amongst you, not to harm you, not to harm you, not to judge you, my friends, simply and only to tell you the truth as it is in Jesus to tell you the truth about God, because there are many delusions, you see, about the being of God in your world today. You've got the, you've got the Islamic delusion. You've got the Buddhist delusion. And you've got the Roman Catholic delusion. You've got many, many delusions, my friends, about the being of God as to who and what he is. Well, we are here as God's servants to tell you about the, the reality of the being of God. And the only place to find that, my friends, is in the Word of God that we bring to you. He's a holy God. He's a thrice holy God. He's a holy, holy, holy Lord God Almighty, which was and is and is to come. Before the mountains were brought forth, he was, and he ever shall be. He's the eternal, everlasting God, and he's the judge of all the earth. And he's the one that you have to do with. Call yourself an atheist or anything else. You still have to do with him. And you still will have to do with him. But we come with this declaration of the being of God to you. And you're deaf, you're stone deaf. You don't listen to our voices. You don't listen to God's word. You don't listen to the message of God. He's given you this beautiful day, sunshiny spring day, and brought his servants amongst you to herald the good news, the message by which you can be saved from sin and death and hell, and you haven't got the time of the inclination to listen. Deaf, stone deaf to the voice of God. Neither have you hearkened unto my servants, says God. Deaf to the word of God. The word of God that declares, my friends, you to be sinners. Not me. It's not my indictment. It's not my condemnation. But here's the good news. Jesus, he said, I did not come to judge. I did not come to kill. I did not come to destroy men's lives. I came to save them. I came to save them. We bring you the message of a savior. One who would save you from danger, from peril, from perishing. But you will not hearken. You will not listen. Death. Deaf to the word of God, my friend. Deaf even to the warning. Deaf to the warnings, my friend. My friends, the grave is not the end. There's a door. No undertaker ever tells you. There's a door in the grave. It drops you down into the pits of hell and damnation for all eternity where the smoke of your torment will rise up forever and ever if you do not repent and believe the gospel. Do I tell you that because I hate you? Am I your enemy because I tell you the truth? Because I warn you of the danger? Does not love warn? If you see your children, your grandchildren in danger, too close to the water, too close to the fire, what do you do? Don't you warn them? And don't you sometimes, don't you have to lift your voice? And don't you sometimes even have to scream at them? Why? Because you hate them? No, because you love them. And you don't want them to have that danger. That's why we warn people. Because we love them. 
and we come here and we warn you of the perils of the danger that you're in and how you can escape that danger through the Savior, the only Savior, the only mediator between God and men, the only one who can bring you back to God, bring you back from the edge of the precipice before you fall into eternal damnation. Jesus, we lift his name up amongst you, but you don't listen. You don't listen. You're not inclined to listen. You don't want to hear. You're enjoying your sin. You're enjoying your iniquity. You're enjoying your life of denial of God. You're enjoying doing wickedly. You're enjoying your rebellion. It's a rebellious generation in Scotland today. Yeah. It's a rebellious generation in Scotland. You've gone back. Scotland has returned to its vomit. Like a dog returned to its vomit. God came and saved you as a nation. Lifted you out of the paganism. Lifted you out of the, the Roman. Delivered you from the Roman persecution. Huh? God blessed you in days gone by, Scotland. But here you are now like a dog. You've returned to your vomit. Huh? Every heathen religion, every blasphemous notion about God and the de denial of God. Yeah. Sup up your vomit. Sup it up, Sterling. That's all you've got left without God. Lest you repent, lest you hear, lest God gives you ears to hear, because only He can. I can't make you hear. I can't make you hear. You have not hearkened to His servants, the prophets, that speaks His word. Stone deaf to God. Deaf is a post, and no hearing aid will, 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 will cure it. Death, God must give you ears to hear, give you eyes to see, give you a heart to believe, give you a will to obey. Unless he does, unless he does, oh, oh, you're lost. Maybe, that, maybe that's not what God sent me here for today. Maybe he sent me here to hearten you. That's what the gospel does, don't you know? The preaching of the gospel, I mean. Foolishness. Foolishness to those who are perishing. It's the savor of life to some, and it's the savor of death to others. You see, you have the gospel here today, my friends, but believe me, you'll never be the same again. You're not, you're not neutral. You don't walk away neutral. You'll either be better or you'll be worse. You'll be softer or harder. You'll be saved. You'll be saved. Or maybe, maybe, perhaps, my preaching here today is the affirmation of your death sentence. Maybe this is the confirmation of your damnation. I don't know. I'm not the place of God. I'm just the messenger. Don't shoot the messenger. I'm just telling you the truth. But the truth is this, my friends, that if you repent and believe the gospel, you shall be saved. You believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, you shall be saved. No question about it. He assures, he promises, he says that he will not cast out anyone who comes to him. There has never been anybody ever in hell who could testify and say, I came to Jesus but he rejected me. You come to him, he'll save you. He bids you too. Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Peace with God, my friends. The righteousness of God. Because here's the problem. Your righteousness, your righteousness is your very best, the very best effort that you can afford. God says is like filthy rags in his sight. The original says, 
like a menstrual cloth in his sight. That's your very best effort. They're like filthy rags in his sight. Your righteousness, you stand before God in judgment in your own righteousness, depending upon some perceived goodness in you. I tell you, you'll be blown away. Lost eternity forever. You need another righteousness. You need the righteousness of God. Where do I find that, you say? You find it in the gospel. You find it in God's Son. He's the righteousness of God. You trust in Him, and God reckons to your account the righteousness of Jesus Christ, a perfect righteousness. That's what you need for the day of judgment. Anything less than perfection, God will not accept. And there's nothing per nothing perfect about you or I. Nothing perfect about any of us. We've all sinned and come short of the glory of God. And all your churchianity, all your church going, Roman Catholic or Protestant, it doesn't matter. All your temple going, all your religion, all your bowing and scraping. All your perceived good, say, oh, I'm a good person, you say. I hear it every day of my life. I'm a good person. I'm doing my best. It's not enough. It's not good enough. Absolute perfection is what God requires of you. And that perfection is found only in Jesus Christ. Only when you trust in him. Only when you believe in him. Are you reckoned righteous, perfectly righteous in God's Son, Jesus Christ? It's by faith you see in faith alone. No person, no person ever says God shall be justified in my sight by their own works, their own de deeds, their own doing. Only by faith in the Son of God. The moment that the sinner wicked, ruined and undone, a rebel against God, iniquitous, sinful. The moment that that sinner truly believes in Jesus, that moment from Jesus, a pardon received, forgiven, and declared by God to be utterly and perfectly righteous in Jesus Christ, in the Son of God, that is. Not in yourself, in Christ. In Christ there is now no condemnation. But outside of Christ, without faith in Christ, all you've got is condemnation. All you've got is damnation to the uttermost. To the uttermost. You need the righteousness of God, which is by faith. In the Son of God, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved. So you see, he says, Neither have we hearkened unto thy servants, the prophets, who spake in thy name to our, well, to our rulers and our fathers and to all the people. O Lord, righteousness belongeth unto thee, but unto us, Confusion of faith. Confusion of faith. That's you today, Sterling. Confusion of faith. Confusion of mind. Living under your modern day delusion. God made man upright in the beginning, says the Bible, but man has sought out many inventions. Every generation invents ways of sinning against the Almighty. Every generation, nothing new under the sun. And you do just the same today, inventing new ways of sinning against God. Your foolish, foolishness, your delusion. You know that a, a woman can become a man and a man woman. Huh? 
Oh, I tell you the endless confusion. I tell you the endless delusion. And all because you will not receive a love of the truth, God gives you over to those delusions. He gives you over to those confusions. And you invent more and more ways of sinning against God until man can no longer find any other ways of sinning against God. Then the end comes. Then the sword falls. Then the day of judgment comes. And you stand before Judge Jesus because he's the one. He's the one who's been appointed to judge the world in righteousness. You stand before Judge Jesus in that day with confusion of faith before him. With all your insanity, with all your delusions, with all your madness, stand before God, before Jesus Christ and give account and be judged every single one of you every single one of you be judged in that day and if you have not repented if you have not turned if you have not repented of your sins if you have not repented of your iniquities if you have not repented of your wickedness if you have not Re repented of your rebellion if you have not returned to your maker let the wicked forsake his way and the unrighteous man his thoughts and let him return unto the Lord he will show mercy abundantly pardon but unless you have done so that will be a dreadful and a fearful day for you so I bid you today, I bid you today, Sterling, listen up, hearken, hear the word of God, hear the voice of God, hear the call of God. When he comes, Jesus coming with his holy angels in flaming fire, to take vengeance upon all that know not God and that obey not the gospel. What is the obedience God requires of you today? Repent ye and believe the gospel. Repent ye and believe the gospel. For the kingdom of God is at hand. Because that's the only way you enter the kingdom of God. His kingdom of righteousness, of grace, of mercy, of kindness, of goodness. That's the only way you enter that kingdom. In the way of repentance. In the way of faith towards the Son of God. There is no other way. And no other name, none other name under heaven by which you must be saved. Darling, no other name, no other Savior, only Jesus, who says to you today, only believe. If thou canst believe, all things are possible to him that believeth. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved. Except you repent, ye shall all likewise perish. God now commanded all men everywhere to repent. Repent. Repent ye and believe the gospel, Sterling. Today, now is the accepted time, says God. Now is the day of salvation. But the time is short. Sand is running through the glass. The clock is moving on. It's close to midnight. The end is coming. The end is near. Today, if you will hear his voice, harden not your hearts, as many, many have done in the past, and provoke God to more 
and more wrath and anger, more fury. Wrath of God is revealed already from heaven against all the ungodliness and unrighteousness of men who hold the truth in unrighteousness. Today, my friend, today, turn, 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 turn before it's too late into the arms of Jesus, into the arms of the only Savior who came into the world to do exactly that, to save sinners like you. And that's what he does. That's his best work, I can testify. As a sinner here today, all oh, he's able, able to save to the uttermost, all that come to God by him. So come today, come today, don't delay. Repent today, believe today on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved. Repent ye and believe the gospel. Repent ye, repent ye and believe the gospel. For the kingdom of God is at hand. The Lord our God is kind and full of grace, both righteous and compassionate is he. The Lord protects all those of childlike faith. When I was in great need, he rescued me. You'd like a copy of God's Word, Sterling, offered to you freely, no cost, no obligation to you. John's Gospel, read, study, meditate, see for yourself. What a wonderful Savior Jesus is. How he calls you out of your sin, out of your darkness, into his light and his love. Read all about it. Read all about it. Good news. Salvation. The word of God offered to you. No cost. No obligation to you. You'd like one. You come and ask for one. May God bless you, Sterling. Bless you, I say, and of mercy, mercy upon your precious, precious, never dying soul.